discovered that he too is into Reiki healing along with his musical talents and along with talking about Rainey's Dance Mastery program that we, well, I'm not quite a Rainey person, but that Rainey is offering uh, for the students coming up. So, Beverly, your connection, of course, is with the Reiki, mm -hmm. and we forgot in the first segment to talk about, we have a clip that we're editing in okay. on one of your projects, and which, which is called? Uh, that project was called Pi Day Die Day. It Pi was, Day uh, Die Day. Pi Day, P-I, not, uh -huh. not. Oh, the math, Pi. Pi. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. um, Pi Day is March 15th, if you weren't aware. Um, the Ides of March are exactly. upon you. Yes. <laughs> um, this was, it was done in 2015 and premiered on Pi Day in uh -huh. 2016 in Bowling Green, Ohio. Mm -hmm. the, the filmmakers are products of Bowling Green Film School. Okay. Um, they are now independent uh, filmmakers and their names are Lindsay LaForest, uh, who wrote it and directed, and her husband Clint. And it was a great pleasure to meet them. Um, as, as I've been telling you, it's a wonderful thing. Social media gets me to audition in many places, whether it be in person or online. Mm -hmm. So I, I met them, and they, they plan a series of horror film, B-type horror films. <laughs> that, that, uh, that Since we've done Christmas and Halloween so many times, they're doing mm -hmm. unusual holidays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they kicked it off with Pi Day. Okay. And uh, it was uh, um, they. They live in Haskins, Ohio, which is another little place I got to. It's a little farm, crossroads actually, outside okay. of Toledo. And um, you, you just roll right through it without even knowing. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I mentioned what a cute little town it is, and they said they were very proud that they're almost a village. They have, their population is growing, so soon Haskins, Ohio will be a village. <laughs> but <laughs> you find more, you must have a lot of gas, because you find uh, more places. I do, don't I? Uh -huh. yes, yes. I was in Erie last year, too, okay. with another wonderful production company called Tim Larson Productions mm -hmm. out in Erie, Pennsylvania. They hired me to do a table read for one of their strips. Okay. What, what a wonderful little thing they've got going mm -hmm. there. So professional, their own soundstage and, and so forth. And you know, all of these people you connect with online, it's just, it, it, you know, it just makes it so easy. Uh, but anyway, Pi Day Die Day, uh, um, I, it was a very small role. It was, you know, a comedic role. Uh, the neighbors you know, calling the cops on their rowdy, uh, rowdy teenagers in the neighborhood. Yes, this is Dolores Miller at 6174 East Chestnut. Those goddamn teenagers are having another party again across the street. There's a party. I cannot hear my Lawrence Welk over there running around naked, screaming. Pushing each other all over the lawn. Good Lord, one of them's on fire. <laughs> we edited piece into the show, uh, the clip that Beverly sent of uh, showing her film making uh, activities. And of course, now we have Darnell, mm -hmm. who we discovered has he's something in common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's doing what, huh? He's learning Reiki. Are you yeah. learning or are you a master now? Oh, I'm not a master. Um, I just, it's only been about a year for me um, okay. um, where I've been practicing. Um, and it's only been on myself and maybe a few friends, but I haven't really done too much. That's um, fine. Mm -hmm. As far as outside of that. But yes, I definitely got into it for the um, healing aspect and being a musician and especially a violist um, with the C string and things that resonates, uh, I forget which string it was, but there was a, a gondola where um, healers would play and they would strum the strings over the body of sick patients and it would uh, regulate the plasma in their blood. Yeah. So really? they, yeah. I'm trying to think, is it A that is the universal uh, letter? I may be wrong, it's not C, but I thought thought it was A, maybe. Well, I know we tune in to an A. Most string, all strings tune to an A. Uh -huh. pretty, but um, I think it could be the, the hum of the universe when you go outside of, when you go into space, that hmm. Um, I think it's closer to a C. Oh, it is actually. closer to yeah, a C. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so you are now 
Are you already a master violist? Well, I can say that, yes. I, I will say a master violist. I've been playing viola for um, over 25 years. Really? Yes. Oh, you're old. Wow. Well, I am experienced. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, but you know, there are always levels. Just like I tell my students, even when you get to black belt, there's a first degree, second degree, sure. third degree, and you keep going sure. up. So, to say it, that you're a master just means there are le there's levels you're that, that you're level. not going to go you can't, you're not going to regress. Right, mm -hmm. right. At all. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm nowhere, you know. But so. now with your viola, do you uh, work with El Sistema here at all? I do, actually. I was one of the first teachers here when El Sistema got here. Okay. And I'm currently still one of the conductors. I conduct the string orchestra, which is like our advanced group. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this year, just a little tangent, it's a little sad because We've been, El Sistema has been here for six years now, and our students that we started are graduating this year. Oh my, So yeah. it's, it's great to see how they've grown from not knowing anything to being almost masters themselves, you know. Right, right. Um, to take it on that way. So what the piece that you just heard actually was, um, or is currently being composed by the string orchestra. We have this of thing, El Sistema. Of El Sistema, yes, here at Rainey. And we have this thing where we do exercises and warm-ups and we learn several different scales and things. Mm -hmm. And depending on the scale, we have certain exercises. And this scale was A minor, we were learning, which is the relative to C major. Okay. Uh, oh. okay. And so, yeah, that's how that came about, just strings and string crosses and things, and then just giving them a chance to apply the knowledge that they have. Because that's one thing as a teacher and as a student that I don't feel we get t enough time for reflection and application. So that's how that any of these pieces come about. And let me um, mention that El Sistema actually is fairly famous. It's a youth orchestra. What's the youngest uh, member that you can recall? We start with, here, or, yes, well, here. Okay, yeah. here we started when we first started the program. We started with first graders, so they so, would be about five or six ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I think we start with second graders. So, so they're about seven ish. Yes, <laughs> which is the youngest. <laughs> okay, and then you go up to what age does it cover? Eighth grade. It goes eighth up to eighth grade. grade. So we have some fourteen year olds now in the program, in the program. and you have to see them in action. They are so professional. Mm -hmm. And you have played with the Cleveland Orchestra. We played with the Cleveland Orchestra actually this past summer. We just opened up and performed with the duo Black Violin um, at Kane Park. So we've done a lot of things, um, Ingenuity Fest, we've done Fox A, we, we performed for the RNC when they were in town. El Sistema at Rainey has done a lot. <laughs> and that is all due, of course, to the leadership of Lee Lazar, who is the executive director of Rainey, and he and his staff keep coming up with these, what can I say, marvelous youth programs to keep Rainey uh, moving along and teaching students and entertaining them in the arts and uh, developing them. And you really have to see how professional that they are. And Rainey has a gazillion programs. They have a gazillion students. They're they're over. Or oh, oh, what did Rain, What did Lee tell me? Is twelve hundred now? A hundred and oh, twelve students. Oh, students. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about oh, how many years we were uh -huh. alive. Uh, yeah, Lee would know better than I. Okay. Yeah, it's an enormous amount. And as I was saying, this is one of the many many programs that Rainey is uh, famous for, but you've got a new one. Yes, we do. And this one is about dance mastery. Yes, and I'm so excited because on top of being the El Sistema String Orchestra conductor, I also am the dance program coordinator here. And dance has been my passion as well as viola. So I've been dancing actually longer than I've been playing this instrument. Mm -hmm. um, so this new program in dance is, is very, dear to me. Um, it is, it consists of three different genres of dance. You go through ballet, modern, and hip hop. And you get that Monday through Friday for an hour a day. So that's five hours a week 
um, of mastery training that you're getting and it's consecutive. And it's awesome because we're partnered with Groundworks Dance Theater. Really? Yes, oh. who's doing the ballet portion of okay. our program. And it's awesome. And we still have spaces available. We are offering scholarships as well as um, financial aid to students and families. And it goes from grades, we're going to open it up from grades three to grade seven. Okay. And in this dance mastery class, um, there's also small tuitions in, adjust, in addition to scholarships and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. things that, and it's very economical. Very. Um, One of the things that I've heard from families and residents was that they thought it was so much money. Oh, you know, I thought about it, I heard about it, but I thought it was thousands of dollars is what I heard. And some, I, some places, some like places it. are, are. Yeah. Very, very reasonable. reasonable. Also, yeah. we include in that tuition the dance wear for the students. So oh. leotard, tights, ballet wow. shoes, wow. that's yeah. all included in the tuition. Now, is there an end production at the end of X number of weeks of yes. classes? So I believe there are 26 weeks of class uh -huh. um, for the year. And then at the end, well, there are interim performances, but at the end we have our annual spring dance performance. Okay. Yes, and that's in April. All that's right. usually the third weekend in April. So <laughs> that's, an, that's another one of their, right. their programs. Sounds that, wonderful. That they are offering. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the brochures, about some of the other, about the dance yes. mastery. All right, and this is our dance mastery program brochure. And if mm -hmm. you open it up, it actually goes through all of the courses that you, will, you or your student will receive. Um, they rotate through three dance styles, as I said before, and we're partnering with Groundworks Dance Theater for the ballet portion, and they get all of their dance clothes as well. So this is a wonderful performance-based uh, performance program because there is a performance, as we mentioned earlier, at the end of the year in April. And uh, the classes during the week start at 4 o'clock? They start at 6. They go from 6 to 7. They're okay. an hour long. And the classes in general at Brady, depending on whether it is art, uh, uh, I can't even think of all of the various programs, check out with the uh, main office because I think some of them start at 4 because they're staggered, you know, schedules. Yeah. And they do run Saturday programs. We do have Saturday programs. So that there's a variety to make yes, it convenient for, you know, parents and relatives to bring the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Beverly, what is that you're showing? Uh, group classes and private lessons enrolled today. And this is about music, voice, uh, yeah. some of the, I can't pronounce that. Fit zone, visual arts, sewing, sewing. I'm so glad somebody's teaching sewing. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's such a lost art, and uh, people could save so much money. So much. This is, and these are our Saturday classes, um, mm -hmm. as Sue was saying. Now, our Saturday classes start at 9.30 a.m., and they go all the way till 3.30 on Saturdays. Uh -huh. So we have anywhere from private lessons, and it's not just for students as well on Saturday, or, or youth. We also have adults. Um, who come and take piano lessons, vocal lessons. Mm -hmm. We have drama, we have ceramics, we have scrapbooking, we have, as you stated, sewing. We have just about anything you can name that is a visual and performing art, we have here at Rainey. And Rainey, like I said, is they've had a hundred years to work on all their projects and programs. And that's why I went blank when I remembered art. <laughs> <laughs> But they, uh, but they have so many other offerings, and we encourage you, uh, the parent, the guardian, uh, to encourage your child to let his, her creative expression come out. I have found in my life that because the schools don't do it, uh, as they did when we grew up, that the child is missing so much from the aesthetic parts of the world. And this is one way that a child who may be having difficulty with academics 
can express themselves through the arts. And I'm amazed at how kids, I'll use the term kids, um, do love to perform, do love to showcase their abilities. And if they're shy, the shyness mm -hmm, tends mm -hmm. to come come out, not out, what does it do? The other way. Go away. Go away. Yeah, definitely <laughs> you have um, another folder showing oh. the various activities. This one is Arts and Enrichment or El Sistema, which I believe we talked about already. Yes, we yes. Did. El Sistema is the musical program, mm -hmm. the orchestral program with the violins and the violas mm -hmm. and the and the bases. Yes, yes. Yeah, the the cellos. That's yeah. also that's part of our after school program that we have here. So our after school program is also consecutive Monday through Friday. Uh -huh. And we partner with neighboring schools and they come here after school. You know, we provide a safe place for them as well as give them instruction in the arts, they get homework help and they get meals uh -huh. um, for five days five days a week after school. And as you were saying, it does enhance the, the kids, their, their creativity, because it gives them a, a sense of culture and self-identity and expression, which are things in the social and emotional intelligence world, which is also something that's recent, um, that we like to focus on. So we always say, Rainy is where the arts change lives. And we do that using the arts as a vehicle, as we were talking about, the vessel mm -hmm. for the change. Um, right. So that's that's really why I believe in Rainy and why... I, we do too here at Wake um, Up and Live Well, I'm also a product of Rainy. Um, you grew up I grew in up Rainy. I grew up at Rainy. I, I started at Rainy myself when I was five. Oh. And I've been here ever since, going through all their programs. And I am a living witness and, you know, a testament to the product and the outcome of what Rainy can do for life. And I'd also like to make a comment. Um, I am so thrilled because this is just something, I don't know what you want to call it, but seeing black males in particular working with something like a viola, a violin, bass, no, they're used to seeing that in jazz mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, orchestra, mm -hmm. but to develop cool. the techniques and skills to play play who, Bach, Chopin, uh, uh, loves. It, anybody, you know, um, it, it's amazing. And like I said, I am so impressed with them. And uh, during the, we had a slight break here, Beverly was bringing up, no, James, our videographer, was bringing up about uh, the differences between a viola mm -hmm. and a violin. Mm -hmm. So can you share with us a, I certainly can. Well, this here, now, I always tell my students, you have to get a relationship with your instrument, okay? Can you so, hold it up just so we see the whole here, thing? This is, yeah. this is Sarah, okay? Everyone say, hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Yes. Hi, yeah. Sarah. So, um, this is a viola, and you really cannot tell the difference with the naked eye because the shape is exactly the same as a violin. Mm -hmm. um, however, the size is slightly different. Is and it smaller it's actually slightly larger than a violin oh, because it's deeper. So the larger, the, the bigger the instrument, the deeper the tone, okay. the deeper the sound. So um, it's actually closer to a cello because the strings are the same. Okay. It's just an octave higher than a cello. So cello has a C, G, and violin has an E. So it's a little higher than a viola. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a beautiful, beautiful instrument. piece of wood. And costs a lot of money. Yes, <laughs> it's an investment. <laughs> and so, I mean, you have to take such care of it. <coughs> Gold, platinum, your teeth, I don't know. But yes, you learn respect mm -hmm. on how to handle an instrument when you are in a music program, such as the ones offered you know, by Rainy. And in a second, we're going to ask Darnell to close out uh, our segment for today. And in the meet, to finish up, we are going to mention the new Dance Mastery mm -hmm. Program. We want you to call Rainy, 216-881-1766, or you could visit our website yes. at www.rainyinstitute.org. 
And again, this will be on the scrawl of the, the Chiron. So, no, it's not a Chiron, but the bottom scrawl on the screen so that you have plenty of time to copy down the, the connecting um, addresses. Do you have an email address here? I do have an email address. It uh -huh. is dweaver, W-E-A-V-E-R, at rainyinstitute.org. In case you want to contact uh, Darnell directly and find out about him as an instructor, a conductor, and we didn't see him dancing today, but he can tear up some floor. <laughs> so are you available for private gigs also? Yes, weddings yes. And, yeah. Okay, so um, call him, and then of course, you can, uh, like I say, call Rady, email Rady, and uh, let's see, I don't know what the email for Rady is. I know it for Lee. Lee Lazar at Rady. L, L. Lazar. L. Lazar at Rainy dot, and Rainy Institute dot org. Yeah. And so you have lots of ways to connect. And has the dance class season started for this year? Yeah, we're, this is our third week. We're in our third week. So we're okay. still, it's still starting. It's still relatively new because this is our first year. Okay. Um, so yeah, we still have a few slots available. I was going to say, can people still call people in? Can there still are call slots in, sure. available. So we want to thank you, Darnell, and Beverly for, it's been a minute since we've seen you. <laughs> a few years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> a couple, a couple then. It's been a minute. <laughs> and so, uh, turns out our, all of our guests today are into Reiki. And I, even I know a little bit about it. So as we close out for today, I want to thank uh, James McGilbray, our videographer. Uh, Lester Bryant, our editor, isn't here today, but we're going to close out and hear another composition uh, by Darnell. Does it have a title? Well, this one, <laughs> um, I was just going to actually going to play because we talked about the viola. I was going to play a viola concerto or a little excerpt of a viola concerto, which is called the Telemann the Viola Telemann. Concerto in G. Of course. Yes. <laughs> and see, it's an everyday thing. It is not that high class that only certain folks can play. And you have to go to the Cleveland Orchestra so that you can get a good appreciation or the Philharmonic, Monic, I mean, there's any organization so that you can <laughs> see uh, how the viola, the violin, and the basses all contribute to making the beautiful music of an entire orchestra. Mm -hmm. So thank you, and let's have you close us out with your selection. Thank you.